Start out by going to software.ultimaker.com and you're going to find the correct version of Cura to download. Now drag Cura and save it in your desired location. Once you have Cura saved, you're going to want to open the application and run through the wizard. Right here, you're going to select Other and hit Continue or Next. Now we're going to want to click on the circle mark Custom. And we're going to name our machine here, RigidBot. And if we're a 10 by 10 by 10 unit, we're going to put these at 254, 254, 254, and nozzle size 0.4. If you're rigid about big, you're going to go 406, 304, and 254 for your X, Y, and Z sizes. Although all the machines do come with a heated bed, leave the box for a heated bed unchecked. If you've already downloaded Cura, you can change the settings by going to File and Machine Settings. And here you can change the build volume of your Rigibot. To open a part file, go up to File and hit Load Model File. Find the file that you want to open. You can open any file in STL format and click Open. Now we're going to go to our basic tab and as I scroll over each line you'll notice that an explanation pops up under each area. Uh, this one's your layer height so this will specify how high each layer is that you're building. Point 0.1 would be the highest resolution and point 0.25 would be a faster build. Your shell thickness is going to be how thick it builds your walls before it does the infill on the part. And you're going to want to check the box marked Enable Retraction. Your bottom and top thickness are the thickness of the top and the bottom of the part before it begins infilling the part. And here's where you, fill density is where you specify how dense you want your part. 100% will be 100% solid. Uh, if you go down to 20%, it'll actually create a honeycomb like structure on the interior of your part and it'll save you model material. Your print speed can vary. We're going to actually go from anywhere from 75 to 120. 120 is a, is a good fast speed um, but you'll notice as you build different parts of, with different geometries and of different sizes as you get larger or more complex parts uh, you may want to slow down your print speed. Our print temperature is going to be at 235, that's in Celsius. Under support, the software will actually auto-generate a support structure underneath overhanging features. And so you can, allow, you can allow it to do that. Or you can specify none if you have self-supporting angles on your part. You'll find that while some parts need support structure built in, that other parts will not. For example, this part, the Eiffel Tower, you can see it will build up these legs on the side here, uh, but for this overhanging feature here, it will actually need a support structure built up underneath so it's not laying the plastic in midair. Go up into your upper right hand corner and click on the tab that says overhang and that will actually show you the overhanging areas. Here you can see them in the red. These are the overhanging areas where it would generate a support structure underneath these. For certain parts, especially flat ones, you may need to create a brim or a raft around the bottom of the part to promote adhesion to the bed. 
and to keep it from warping, although this is often not needed. Specify your filament diameter in millimeters, and that would be 1.75. And then your flow rate is going to be 100%. Now we're going to go to the advanced tab. Your nozzle size should already be set to 0.4 millimeters. Um, these other settings here are more for advanced users and you can modify these as, as you try different materials. But your retraction speed should be set to 20. Uh, the distance should be 4.5. Initial layer thickness 0.3. And as you go down here, just make sure your numbers are matching up. Travel speed it is 120. Bottom layer speed, 50. Set your infill speed at 60. And then you're going to want to make sure that the enabling cooling fan box is checked. We're going to position our part now on the build platform. In your lower left hand corner, there's an icon that says rotate. If you click on that, you can rotate your part in 360 degrees on all axes. The best orientation for your part is going to be with typically with the flattest part at the bottom. The next icon next to it is scale. From here, you can scale your object to different sizes, especially if it came imported in a different unit, say millimeters instead of inches. You can actually change the scaling of it. The next icon is mirror, so you can mirror the part along the X, Y, or Z axis. In the upper left, you're going to notice that there's an estimate of how long the part will take to build, as well as how much material is estimated that it will consume. Because the Rigibot is so big, it allows you to build multiple objects at one time. If you'd like to copy the object that you have on your build platform, you just right click and hit multiply object and then select how many objects you would like to print. You can do different objects or you can do multiple copies of the same object. Basically whatever fits on your build platform. You can place objects wherever you would like on the build platform. The preferred location is in the center of the build platform. Now we're going to save the file as a G code. So you're going to go up to File and you can hit click on Save G code. And you're going to name it whatever you want. And you're going to hit Save. And what this is actually doing is this is actually saving the tool paths that the printer will read and so basically for example if you if you go up to our view bar and you click on layers you can actually see all the layers that that this part will be uh, this is 10 layers you can see that in your lower right hand corner and if I rotate this around you can actually see the different layers you can see the red exterior contours and then you can see the yellow infill on the inside here now the file is ready to be loaded onto the printer.